Okay, on the next page that we've got here, we're going to be talking now about integration notation. And that's actually following on from what I just said about the best way to present your answers for this kind of thing. And this is some, um, some notation that you may have seen to differentiate an expression. So here, we use this d by dx on 5x squared. And when you do d by dx to 5x squared, you get 10x. This d by dx actually means differentiate this thing with respect to x. That language that I'm using at the end, with respect to x, means x is the variable that we are differentiating. Probably sounds a bit random that I'm saying that now. But when you go into year 13, you might differentiate it with respect to a different variable. And that will make more sense when we get there in year 13. Now, this d by dx 5x squared is 10x. You may actually have seen before. If you're going to d by dx, if you differentiate y with respect to x, do you know what happens if you differentiate y with respect to x, what you get? What does it look like it's going to be? It's actually this. It's just dy by dx. So when you have something like y equals x squared, we're not just randomly saying dy by dx. We're actually differentiating this with respect to x to get 2x. And we're differentiating y with respect to x to get dy by dx. This is not just something random that we're writing at the beginning. It's actually what happens when you differentiate y with respect to x. We get dy by dx. And again, that's not going to change anything that you're doing in year 12, but it will change your understanding in year 13, because we will try and do harder types of differentiation where we don't just start off writing dy by dx. We actually are differentiating with respect to x. And this will make more sense, hopefully, in the future. Now, similarly, there is special notation that we use for integration. We start off by saying this kind of curly S type shape. And this curly S type shape means to integrate. So when you see this, it means integrate this expression. And this time, we write a dx at the beginning. And this dx similarly means here with respect to x. So this means integrate 10x with respect to x. And I've said here, the dx is needed just as it is needed in the differentiation notation at the top of the slide. It means the same thing. So if I want to integrate 10x with respect to x, I get 5x squared plus c. Now, because that's typed, if I was to write this, I would write it like this, integrate 10x with respect to x. You cannot forget to have that dx at the end because it's part of the instruction. Am I integrating it with respect to x? Or maybe I might have something that was, I don't know, 10t. If I have 10t, I want to integrate that with respect to t. t is the thing that I'm looking at. And when you go into year 13, you will see things where you might be doing 10x, but instead of it with respect to x, you might be doing it with respect to t, or a different letter. So that's why the notation means something. But right now to you, it's probably not going to mean much. I just want you to try and be in the habit of writing it out properly. Okay. So what we've got here, written at the bottom, is that this is known as indefinite integration in contrast to definite integration, which we will see later in this chapter. There's me mentioning it again without telling you what it actually is. Um, and it is called indefinite because the exact expression is unknown. So if something is indefinite, it means we're not really sure what it is. That's because of the plus C that we get at the end. We don't really know what it integrates to. So we're not definite about what it integrates to. So we give it a plus C. We're not sure what the actual thing is that it originally was. OK? So there's nothing new here, just what the integration, just the integration symbol that we've got at the beginning here. Now, this is typed a little bit small. If I was going to write it out, I'd probably write it out a little bit bigger like this. And notice when this bit is written out, the brackets are required if there are multiple terms. So I actually have to say that this whole thing is being integrated with respect to x here. I can't just, I have to put brackets if there's two things being added or subtracted. So here, this is just the same thing you've been doing in that competition. So I've got x to the power of minus 3 over 2. What will x to the power of minus 3 over 2 integrate to? It's going to be to the power of what? Minus a half. Good, because we've increased the power from 
minus 3 over 2, we've increased it by 1 to minus a half. And what will it be multiplied by? Minus 2. Good. We're going to do the reciprocal of minus a half, which is minus 2. And then we're going to deal with the next term that we've got here. What does 2 integrate to? 2x. So we just get 2x, and it's a plus 2x. And we get plus c that we've got at the end here. OK, so do you want to just get that one written down on the, the notes page for this? So yeah, for the integration sign, you start at the top and kind of come down nice and long. So you make sure it's covering more than the top and bottom. You don't want to do one that looks like this. This is bad, OK? It's not a little s. It's a big s that covers from the top, way above the top, well, not way above, covers more than the top and more than the bottom. We don't want it to be short like this. It's much nicer for it to be longer, like the one that I've written here. We prefer it to be tall and long rather than short and stubby. Short and stubby is not what we want for this. So you'll see here, there's no y or f of x at all. We're just saying, integrate this expression with respect to x. Everything you've been doing previously had dy by dx and y, or f of x and f dash x. You don't have to have that if you just want to talk about integration here. The second one is integrate 6t squared minus 1 dt. And I've said here, note that it's a dt and not a dx, because we're not integrating it with respect to x anymore. The variable we're dealing with is t. They have to match each other if we want to be able to do them. So the integral of 6t squared minus 1 with respect to t for this indefinite integration here. Um, Mabel, would you be able to help me integrate the 6t squared, what that should be? Um, Good. And then 2, good. Yeah, you can do all of that in your head. So that was the 6 divided by the 3 to give us the 2t cubed. And then red one, what would the next bit be? Uh, minus t plus c. Good, minus t plus c. This is the temptation might be to say, oh, it's minus x, because that's what we've been doing so far. But because we're doing it with respect to t, everything needs to be in terms of t. And then we've got one down here that looks harder. But as long as you trust the rules of integration, there's no problem with this that we've got here. So we're trying to integrate px cubed plus q with respect to x. And it says that p and q are constants. If it's a constant, it just means it's going to behave like a number. It behaves like a number, not a variable. And you'll see what I mean when we actually do some of the integration. We're just going to leave it as p. We're not going to try and increase the power of p, because we're not doing it with respect to p. We're doing it with respect to x. So for this first term that I've got here, I'm going to increase the power to 4 and divide by 4. So I'm going to have p over 4, x to the power of 4, plus the next bit, plus q, x, plus c. And that's it. You may write that as a, a quarter. You could say it's a quarter p x to the 4 plus q x plus c, or that. I mean, they, they do mean the same thing. I don't think either of them are better than the other one. Just wanting to remind you that these things may be presented to you in different ways. As long as you're familiar that they mean the same thing, it doesn't matter which of those ones uh, that you actually want to, to go with, OK? So nothing new, 
just a little bit of notation there. And then you're going to do some more practice um, before the end of the lesson, just as our first bit on integration here. And then next lesson, we will do uh, definite integration. OK, I'm just going to quickly do this one with you as well. If you haven't written that all out, I can come back to that page. You just need to make sure you ask me to do that. This question that we've got here, they've told us what y is equal to. x happens to be greater than 0 here. Find, in their simplest form, the integral of y with respect to x. Notice how I don't have to put a bracket around the y here, because there's only one thing. So I'm going to say, well, I'm integrating this thing. That's what y is. I'm integrating 2x to the power of 5 plus 6 over root x. What is 6 over root x in index form? 6x six to the power of minus a half. And I'm doing that with respect to x. But this time, it requires brackets because there's two terms that we've got there to show that I'm doing it to the whole thing that I have. Taylor, would you be able to help me do um, both of these parts of integration, please? What, is, what do you think the 2x to the power of 5 should go to? So the power will go up to 6. Yep. Excellent. Good. So you've got 12x to the power of a half plus c. Plus c. Perfect. Really, really clearly explained there as well. If, you, um, if I ask you a question, if you can give an explanation, that's always much, much um, more preferable. So we're going to go back to the boards. We're going to do some more practice on these kinds of things. But I might send you to do some of the slightly trickier questions on these from exercise 13b. Maybe some of them will have some constants included. But I just really want to get this idea of integrating really solidly um, into our minds here. Okay.